Hey now guys, it's me, it's me, it's Knockout21. How are we all doing today? As you can tell by the title of the video and the art I drew accompanying it, <laughs> we are going to be looking at Drill Dozer on a Game Boy Advance. Now, this is one of those unique games that has the Rumble feature, you know, one of two games, I think. And it's something of a hidden gem. Came out late in the Game Boy Advance's lifetime. And not a lot of people got to play it, especially since it came out after the DS was released. So yeah, it's one of those games that went under the radar. But it's a very unique game, it has its own take on a platforming genre. And we're going to go ahead and look into it, see what it offers, how it's unique, so on and so forth. Anyway, onward to the video. Now when it comes to Drill Dozer, the gameplay is very unique. I've never seen anything like this before on any platformer, to be honest. However, I do have to point out that it's a little slower than what I'm used to. Um, I'm more used to playing something like Mario or Sonic, and those games are generally faster paced. But Drill Dozer, they're a little bit slower than that. It's, it's, it does take time to get used to. I'm not knocking any points for it. I just thought you should know. Regardless, this game has a lot to offer. As you can see here, I unlocked something called a second gear. Now this is also unique, but also kind of like uh, frustrating. These gears you lose after you beat the level. Um, they're not lost permanently. You can like find them again in the next level, but it is something that is kind of annoying. Regardless of what you may think of this whole gear thing, they are necessary to pass certain segments of a level. Essentially what the gears do is prolong the longevity of your drill spin. They are very necessary to reach certain portions of a level that you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach. For example, here I'm going to try to reach a treasure chest I'm not able to because you know I don't have the proper gear yet. And once I get the proper gear, I could go ahead and try again. Drill, shift up, and there you go. I'm able to reach the treasure I wasn't able to before. Now, on a related note, I have to point out how impressed I am they were, that they were able to take the concept of spinning a drill and then just expanding upon that. Using the drill to solve puzzles, open pathways, launch your dozer up in the air, this is something that I've never really expected out of a game of this nature, but the fact that they were able to pull it off and pull it off so well really impresses me. And because of this concept, gameplay is going to be pretty unique. It's going to take some time to get used to, which, which isn't a bad thing. Any game that's unique in this way definitely offers up a unique experience. However, it is going to take some time to get accustomed to controls and how this game operates, getting used to the mechanics of this thing, especially since there are certain levels that wholly rely on how long and how fast you spin your drill. In which I believe that only adds to the gameplay. By doing this, it keeps the game kind of fresh. You know, it doesn't make it feel like the samey all around. And I personally like them because, you know, it offers a, you know, a nice deviation from their normal gameplay. Although it does take a little time to get used to, these movements and stuff fully rely on how well you're able to operate your drill. You know, keeping them in a sturdy, steady pace, uh, how quickly you can actually gear up and stuff. Still, it's an awesome experience that truly adds to the overall, you know, you know, momentum or the overall feel of the game. Controlling the dozer feels a little bit heavy, 
though it is it is quite responsive it moves like any other platformer however it's sluggish movement might throw you off a little bit regardless what's key about uh, controlling this game is how well you utilize the L and R buttons uh, these control the direction of your drill spin and are utilized to like progressing through you know levels progressing through puzzles that sort of thing um, I do have to point out however if you plan to play this on a Game Boy player uh, using the GameCube controller uh, I would not recommend the default you know GC controller because as we all know the L and R buttons on that thing are kind of deep and could really you know irritate your hand after a while if possible try to use something like an adapter that allows you to play your Super Nintendo control on a GameCube or if you have it that Hori retro pad uh, for the GameCube so yeah I thought I'll let you guys know about that the music tracks really capture that atmosphere you're in albeit they do sound a little cartoony still it, they do match to the location you're at you could definitely hear the Pokemon influence in this game especially since composer Go Ichinose uh, made the composed this game and Pokemon so yeah you definitely hear a little bit of Pokemon in this in the music in this game however I do have to point out that there's not really a track in this game that really stands out save for the one that plays when you get all three gears uh, the music starts pumping and everything sounds exciting so yeah out of all the tracks that's probably my most favorite one however there's not really anything besides that one that really catches my, catches my ear sound effects are pretty solid everything from the whine of the drill to things breaking sound really good voice samples are also good as well Jill shouts and screams whenever she gets attacked or is powering up definitely adds to her character and the same goes for some of the enemy characters as well they too have their little quirky sound of sounds whenever they get hit definitely adds charm to the overall experience <laughs> assets in this game look like they could belong in a cartoon something like on Saturday morning every sprite is colorful and well drawn Jill herself is full of personality with the way she's animated and stuff enemies on screen are also well drawn showing off their own personality instead of just being cannon fodder it's quite impressive how they were able to pull off all this on a small screen Game Freaks made the graphics in 2d and stuck to the side-scrolling form formula. The backgrounds and overall surroundings are varied to avoid that repetitive feel that comes with games like this sometimes. My only gripe in regards to the graphics is the number of background layers. Games like Sonic Advance already had like multi-tiered parallax scrolling going on and the fact that this game isn't able to pull that off while running at 30 frames a second kind of irritates me however the lack of depth although annoying isn't all that bad everything is on a supposed to be in a small screen regardless so yeah I can't really knock it too much for that however it is there
there you have it guys, Drill Dozer for the Game Boy Advance. I gotta give this game a B. It's an awesome game with a lot of replay value. Although it, there's a couple of issues here and there, but still a great game overall. Uh, once you power up your Drill Dozer, you could play back any old previous beaten levels and find treasure, get a bunch of unlocks, power up your Drill Dozer to the max and just basically have a good time. Definitely a lot of replay value in this game. However, I have to point out a couple of issues. It's regarding the Game Boy interface. Now, when I was using that app on my GameCube to get like the footage and whatnot, for some reason, the actual cartridge began to like vibrate, began to rumble as if it was connected to a Game Boy Advance. And believe me, that freaked me out. I thought that was some sort of error. I guess it's how the GBI program was you know, made or whatnot. It was made to pretend it's a real Game Boy Advance and that's probably why there was this issue. However, if you play using the, um, what was it called? The Game Boy Player Disc, the actual rumble would be transferred over to the GameCube control. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, another issue is the price. Now, I got lucky. I'm, like, I'm gonna admit it, I got lucky. I bought this game back, way back when, when it first came out, like a month after it was released on clearance. Like I only paid like half of what it was originally, what it originally was, if I remember right. Some like $20, $15, something like that. So I lucked out. If you plan to play this on original hardware, just be prepared to pay a pretty penny. A loose copy of this game costs around $60 to $75, even possibly even more. An inbox copy like you see here fetches for over $100, between like $100 to $150 depending who's selling it. So yeah, you got to be prepared for that if you want to play on OG hardware. However, if you have a Wii U, the game's only $8 on there. So if you really want to play this game, don't want to spend a lot of cash, I do definitely recommend you play it on the Wii U, especially since it's really, really cheap. And plus, you're still getting a fun game out of it. Anyway, this was Knockout21. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And like always, have a good one. Take care, you guys.